Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Gerald Crocker from the Community Action Partnership, and welcome to this afternoon's uh, webinar. It is the first webinar in a four-webinar series on strategic planning. Uh, this afternoon or this morning, depending on where you're signing in from, we'll be talking about an overview and preparing to, strategi uh, to do your strategic planning process. Uh, the next three webinars in the series uh, will go through the rest of the strategic planning process. So welcome to the first webinar, and let's do a little bit of housekeeping before we jump on in. Uh, first of all, I'll be joined as a presenter this afternoon by Courtney Kohler. Uh, Courtney, do you want to uh, do a quick introduction? Sure. Hi, I'm uh, Courtney Kohler, and I'm the Senior Associate with the Community Action Partnership on the Training and Technical Assistance Team. Great. Thanks so much, Courtney. Courtney and I will be handing uh, handing off back and forth uh, over the course of this uh, of the webinar. A uh, couple of other housekeeping items. First of all, this webinar will be recorded. You can have access to all of our training and technical assistance webinars through the partnerships website, uh, including the slide decks for the webinars as well. Uh, you can access that uh, through the uh, tools and resources, and also the webinar section of the partnerships website. We usually get these webinars up. Uh, within a couple of days, but since we've got the uh, weekend coming up, uh, this will probably be posted early next week. Um, Secondly, if you want to ask questions during the webinar, uh, you can use the chat or the Q&A box. Uh, we suggest using the chat box. It's just a little bit easier for us uh, to track the questions, but you can go ahead and enter those questions in at any time. Uh, we'll stop at various points throughout the webinar to see what questions have come in. So go ahead, uh, shoot your questions over to us, and we will take them uh, in order. And please feel more than free uh, to ask questions at any time during the webinar. Otherwise, everybody is muted, uh, muted on entry because we do have a larger group on. Um, but otherwise, uh, we'll try to get to all questions by the end of the webinar. Also, uh, you're always more than free to uh, email or call uh, Courtney or myself directly or anybody else on our training and technical assistance team. Uh, we're uh, certainly probably not going to answer all of your questions this afternoon, so we're always available uh, for any follow-up, any details, help with getting additional resources, or other questions about training and technical assistance uh, that you might have. So uh, Courtney has started the recording, so let's go ahead and begin our afternoon's webinar. So just a quick review of the agenda. Uh, we're going to cover two big picture issues uh, in the next hour. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, some big picture issues uh, in strategic planning and community action. So uh, what is the role of strategic planning in community action? How does it fit with other processes like your needs assessment and your community action plan? And why is, why is strategic planning especially important for community action agencies? And we'll also uh, talk about the organizational standards standards just to make sure that you are in compliance. The next part of our webinar will focus on stage one, getting ready to plan uh, for your strategic plan. Uh, we always advise that agencies uh, leave uh, at least six to 12 months uh, before they actually sit down to begin the strategic planning process to make sure their agency is ready. So we'll focus in on what you need to do to make sure that your agency is fully prepared to engage in its strategic planning process, have all the moving parts in place, and are ready uh, to really focus in on doing the strategic plan, and we will talk about those later stages in future webinars. Um, so to start off, I want to make sure that everybody knows about the resources that the partnership has for our agency. We have a strategic planning guide, the Comprehensive Guide to Community Action Strategic Planning. That is available on our website. It goes through all the stages of the strategic planning process, and it's specifically written for community action agencies. We know that many uh, nonprofits, public sector agencies, um, and private sector organizations do strategic planning. Uh, there's no one right way to do strategic planning. There's certainly plenty of wrong ways to do it, um, but there are some unique twists when you do strategic planning as a community action agency. Uh, there are things in the CSBG Act that you need to, uh, to take account of. There are obviously the organizational standards. There is our uh, results-oriented management and accountability framework, and it's principles and practices. So this guide is written with our community action agencies in mind. 
We always suggest that our agencies start off their preparation process for strategic planning by looking at the guide. It's a great resource for your boards, uh, for your staff that are involved in the process, and we always recommend that if you're using an outside consultant, put it in their contract that they will re uh, re uh, review this guide, and that way they make sure they know uh, the unique uh, requirements of strategic planning uh, for community action agencies. You can get this guide on the Partnerships website. You'll see on your screen, uh, circled in yellow, the Tools and Resources tab. So you just simply click on that and go to our publication section and you can download it there. And of course, you can always just shoot Courtney or I an email if you have any trouble getting it or if you have any questions about the guide. Uh, the material in the webinar is gone into in more detail uh, in the guide. So again, we'd encourage you to take a look at that. Make sure you have it handy and use it as a resource uh, in preparation. Uh, and in the implementation of your strategic planning process. So um, I'm now going to uh, uh, tur uh, uh, turn it over to Courtney to talk a little bit about the role of planning in community action. So Courtney, let me press the uh, presenter button. Over to you. All right. Well, thank you, Jarl. Um, so I'm going to be talking about the role of planning in community action. Um, and planning is really an essential piece of not only the management and accountability framework that we have, um, which is BROMA, that agencies operate under, but to also ensuring that a community action agency is um, really fulfilling its purpose and addressing the local community needs. So this here that you see on your screen now is actual instruction from uh, the Office of Economic Opportunity um, and really focuses in on the mission and purpose of community action agencies. And so um, it talks about both long range and short range plans. So that's um, referring to the strategic plan as well as the community action plan or CSBG work plan. Uh, states often have different names for that more short range plan. Um, but it also talks about um, taking into account the areas of greatest need. So it really focuses in on um, the fact that the strategic plan and all of these plans that the agency does should always pull straight from the community needs assessment. Um, you also want to look at trends over time. Um, so looking at um, you know, the needs to help inform the long-term plan and also the prioritized needs. So not just a um, you know, long listing of needs, but really looking at what are those that are the most important and really rise to the top so we can allocate time and resources appropriately. And also you know, thinking about the fact that if you don't um, pull from your community needs assessment, then you often can be vulnerable to um, mission risk as well. So, you know, we've already, I already kind of talked about this connection, but uh, to reiterate the importance of this, um, the community needs assessment strategic plan and community action plan um, are very much tied together and should very much um, influence one another uh, and pull from the other. So the strategic plan should always begin with a review of the data and conclusions from the community needs assessment. Um, and um, then, of course, the strategic plan um, should inform the community action plan of how the agency will deliver programs and services. So, and again, that, yes. uh, Courtney, one, one thing to add in, um, you may notice in the organizational standards um, that your needs assessment has to be done every three years and your strategic plan only has to be done every five years. Um, we'll talk about this a little bit in the, the organizational standard, uh, but we suggest that you do your uh, strategic plan as close to the needs assessment uh, as possible, uh, which would put you on a three-year planning cycle moving from the needs assessment to the strategic plan. Back over to you, Courtney. Thanks. Um, so, so yes, we want to make sure that both are, um, you know, connected as far as how each influences the other, um, and then both uh, actually should tie back to that community needs assessment. So whenever we're talking about this connection from the assessment of the needs to the strategic plan, um, there's several things that we want to consider. So we want to um, make sure that this good connection is established by connecting um, the need to the goals or outcomes, um, by also um, you know, carrying those levels of needs through. So we'll talk a little bit more about this in a moment, but looking at um, you know, family, family, agency, and community level needs, 
um, and how those translate into the community action, um, into the strategic plan um, in um, family, agency, and community level goals um, and related strategies. Um, then we also want to look kind of beyond that surface level and really, um, you know, we don't want to just look at the surface level need, but we want to look more at, you know, what are the underlying issues, what are the causes, what are the conditions under the need um, to really better plan on top of that. And then also determining where to focus our energy and where to partner is another important piece um, in connecting the assessment to the strategic plan. And then really using the team approach also to, um, you know, Usually those who are very experienced with the needs, so this might be frontline staff, program managers, those who are seeing what the needs are in the community um, on a regular basis, to be able to determine how to appropriately address them um, and overcome the barriers that people are experiencing. So on this focus of the, um, or on the focus of community, agency, and family level, um, goals tied to the needs and the assessment, um, we want to make sure that we're always asking who need, whose need is it to be able to plan accordingly. Um, because if it's uh, a community level need, then, you know, we're looking at a different type of strategy than if it's a family level need. And so we want to be able to consider the outcomes to be achieved at the family agency and community level. And we also want to identify strategies to achieve the outcomes and address the needs. So another piece of this too, um, whenever we're um, looking at planning community actions, it's really important to work smarter and really utilize your community needs assessment. Um, a lot of times you get to the strategic planning process and you think, you know, we have to review all of this data all over again. We have to do, a, you know, almost a whole other assessment. But if you use your community needs assessment um, and work smarter during that process of it, um, then your strategic planning process can flow very smoothly um, without a whole lot of um, maybe additional research. Um, so a lot of this can already be done as far as the processes you're already doing in your agency. Um, so during your community needs assessment, um, making sure you're really looking at the prioritized needs so that those are set up and ready to go whenever you enter the planning process. Also looking at the assessment of partners and assets so that you can look at what's already going on in the community. Um, you know, what are other community partners already doing that they're really good at, that we don't need to start a whole nother um, initiative around, and that we maybe just need to partner with them or build um, a better relationship um, to be able to offer holistic services throughout the community. And then also looking at the potential causes influencing the needs, so having that discussion as part of your community needs assessment process um, so that you already have that information to feed into strategic planning. And then also um, really looking at those recommendations from the community needs assessment team and carrying through some of those similar people um, that worked on that process to be involved in the strategic planning process as well. Um, so all of that can feed into your agency strategy and make that process um, a lot smoother as you transition from the needs assessment to the strategic plan. So next we're going to talk a little bit about um, why agencies engage in strategic planning. Um, so I'll hand it over back to Jarl. And, um, and go from there. Great. Thanks so much, Courtney. So why don't we uh, just take a quick stop and see if any questions have come through or if anybody has any uh, questions uh, about some of those uh, big picture topics connecting your strategic plan to your community needs assessment. Sure, so the only one, we don't see any questions that have come in at this point. Somebody did mention some feedback, so we might want to make sure we're just muting um, in between, but otherwise, no questions at this point. All right, so let's talk a little bit uh, in more detail about why community action agencies engage in strategic planning. So I think the strategic planning is important to community action agencies uh, for a number of reasons. Your strategic plan is your comprehensive big picture uh, overview of the overall direction that your agency is going to go uh, for the next three years. And I think it plays a, or should pay, play a crucially important uh, role in guiding your agency. 
And I think it helps you unify people and strategies. Uh, strategic planning is a great opportunity to make sure that everyone across your different uh, departments, your programs and services are on the same page. They have a strong sense of your agency's mission. Uh, they understand how uh, you work across programs and services, across departments uh, or other functional units uh, in your agency. And it's a great opportunity to get people together to energize folks and really make sure that your agency is pulling together as a team. It's also a time when you look and mobilize uh, the resources that you have uh, available to you. You're looking at your budget, you're looking at potential resources that you could tap into, like additional funding streams, uh, and you're looking at community resources. Uh, again, one of the things that you should be doing in your needs assessment is identifying community assets, uh, some that you might be working with uh, already, maybe a community foundation, a local hospital system, uh, but your needs assessment uh, should be a broad uh, survey of those different assets in your community, and you, be, you may be able uh, to draw on some additional ones in your strategic planning process. Um, strategic planning is also a great way uh, to anticipate and head off challenges. We'll be talking about connecting a SWOT analysis next time, looking at your strengths and weaknesses, your opportunities and threats. But strategic planning is when you take that step back, get that 360-degree picture of how your agency is doing, uh, what in your external environment uh, do you need to be aware of, changes in funding, uh, legal changes, uh, changes in your overall economic environment, and be able to take those accounts to make sure that you're not caught off guard and you really have a clear plan for your agency for the next three years. Strategic planning is also great uh, for capacity building in your agency. Uh, it's a good way to identify and support new leadership. So if you have uh, a new executive director, uh, if there's been a lot of turnover uh, on your board, your strategic planning process uh, is a good way to make sure folks have that big picture um, and are all on the same page. Uh, strategic planning should also generate energy and confidence. Uh, you know, sometimes I think there's a tendency for agencies to see strategic planning as more of a check-the-box exercise, um, but if you do strategic planning right, it's a great way uh, to make sure that you're engaging uh, your internal and your external stakeholders, uh, getting their opinions, uh, engaging them uh, in the overall planning process, and so it's a good way to energize staff, um, get them uh, bought into your mission, what you're doing as an organization, and also uh, bought in on how you're going to move forward over the next three years. Strategic planning is also an opportunity to take a look at some big picture questions of accountability, um, making sure that you have a clear structure and process in place to implement the strategic plan, uh, making sure that the staff is reporting to the leadership team about different strategic plan activities, and that in turn your leadership team is reporting to your board. So we'll talk in more detail uh, in later webinars about how to make that happen, but it's a good opportunity uh, to make sure that all the different levels of your organization, from frontline staff to management to leadership team to board, are all pulling together and pulling in the same direction. And then for leadership. Strategic planning is a great way to make sure you've got that buy-in, um, especially between the leadership team and the board on the overall direction of your, uh, of your agency. Uh, it's an opportunity uh, to make those sometimes hard decisions about where to go uh, with new programs and services, um, sometimes where to shift resources, maybe moving some away from programs or services that aren't producing outcomes uh, to those uh, that might uh, have a better return on investment, and also to make decisions about maybe going after new resources, maybe adding a program or service, uh, applying for a grant, uh, or working with other community partners. So uh, those all require buy-in uh, from key stakeholders, both inside your agency and outside your agency. So strategic planning is one of the, the key processes to help make sure you've got that consensus as an agency moving forward. And it's also a good way to make sure you're strengthening your existing leadership, that your uh, leadership team and your board are working together, your leadership team and the rest of the staff all share that collective uh, vision uh, and mission of the agency, and you have a clear sense uh, of the way forward for, uh, for where you're going in the next couple of years. So let's talk a little bit about characteristics of strategic planning. Uh, as I said at the beginning, uh, there is no one-size-fits-all approach to strategic planning. You should certainly feel free to adapt what we're suggesting to you in this webinar series and in our uh, guide to strategic planning in ways that fit your agency. 
We rarely see strategic planning done exactly the same way in an agency. There are usually a few twists and differences, so please feel more than free to adapt what we're saying. Uh, but these are some general uh, rules of thumb in terms of characteristics that describe strategic planning. So first off, it is board-driven and staff-engaged. Uh, crucially important to make sure you are getting that feedback from your board about the strategic direction of the agency, um, and that staff is engaged in the process too, uh, both in terms of the mechanics of, of actually getting the process up and running, uh, probably making some decisions about the design of the process, how it's going to unfold, um, but also engaging staff, getting feedback, uh, and making sure there are opportunities uh, for staff at different levels of the organization to participate in the process. Strategic planning should also be data-driven. You're not just pulling your strategic plan out of thin air, and Courtney's already talked about the, the critical importance of the needs assessment in the strategic planning process, but in uh, the next webinar we're doing uh, this coming Monday, we'll talk more about the process that you should put in place to gather data for your strategic plan. Also, strategic planning, as the name certainly implies, Set those long-term goals, uh, what you're going to accomplish one year, two years, three years down the road. And so in our third webinar, we'll talk about how to make sure you're writing an outcomes-based strategic plan where you're very clearly defining the outcomes you want your agency to achieve, the strategies that you're going to use to achieve them, and then the specific actions you need to take to implement those strategies. Um, strategic planning also forces choice and uh, sometimes creates those hard decisions about how resources uh, are used. So one of the things you're doing in the strategic planning process is taking that step back and looking at how you've all allocated resources in your agency um, and determining if you need to shift those around, shift your priorities, um, and then also planning out uh, over the next three years, determining what makes sense to do in the first year, in the second year, and the third year. Uh, you can't do everything at the same time, obviously, so strategic planning is really a great way to make sure you're sequencing what you're doing, uh, your programs and services, any new activities, any new programs that you're going to add in a way that makes sense. Um, strategic planning should also increase internal integration and efficiency. One thing you're doing in the strategic planning process is looking at things uh, like whether your programs are, are still in silos, are they integrated, are they probably somewhere uh, in between on that continuum, um, are there opportunities to increase the efficiency of your programs and services, maybe increase the efficiency of your internal systems. And again, strategic planning is a crucial part of the Roma cycle. Uh, in fact, as we'll see, it embodies the Roma cycle, and Roma asks us to always look for those ways to make continual improvements. And so strategic planning is that, uh, is that opportunity to ask those big picture questions, where can we do better? Um, strategic planning should also be used uh, to uh, promote change and innovation, to look at ways to improve outcomes. So even though I think you should always be doing this as a community action agency, strategic planning asks you uh, to take that step back and look, are there new innovative or evidence-based programs and services that you might want to adopt or, or, or adapt pieces of? Um, are there new approaches that you might want to implement, uh, such as two-generation programs or bundled services, uh, looking at ways to integrate your services, so it's that opportunity to look at ways to continuously improve your, uh, your overall agency management and operations, and ultimately through that, the outcomes you're able to achieve in the community. And lastly, strategic planning leverages and builds on relationships. Um, that's true internally. That's why it's so important uh, to involve uh, stakeholders uh, from different sections, uh, from different levels of your organization, from the front lines to management to the leadership team to the board. And it's a great way to engage your external stakeholders, uh, your key partners uh, that you might have service delivery uh, agreements with, um, other folks that you might collaborate with on advocacy, education, or awareness campaigns, um, and the rest of the community. Um, another thing uh, to take into account is incorporating a, a local theory of change. Um, we already have a national theory of change as a community action network, um, but we encourage all agencies to take a look at uh, resources that we're developing on creating a local agency theory of change, uh, which is just a, a fancier way of saying putting together a theory that explains what you're trying to accomplish, what you're doing to accomplish it, and why you think what you're doing uh, is going to 
to work. Uh, it's a, a great help in evaluation. It makes sure you have that big picture together. Um, it helps stimulate those important discussions about agency assumptions uh, and roles um, and make sure that you've got that big picture description of what you're trying to do as an agency, um, which helps you figure out are you actually accomplishing uh, the outcomes you're trying to achieve in the community? Are there places where programs are working that you might want to shift more resources to? And it also helps you answer the question of their places where programs aren't getting the kind of outcomes uh, that you want. So we're not going to spend too much time talking about uh, a local agency theory of change. Uh, that's a topic and, and probably a webinar series in and of itself. But we just want to encourage our agencies to take a look at some of the resources that are out there. I'll show you in a second. And to think about incorporating uh, an agency level theory of change into their strategic planning process. So the graphic up on the screen is the national theory of change that we now have as a community action network. So just hope folks are uh, familiar with it. Uh, it lays out uh, the national goals, the services and strategies, the core principles and how we do performance management. So it's a good template uh, for you to take a look at, but we have some additional resources to help you develop your own theory of change. On the partnership website, under that Tools and Resources tab, um, we have a series of guides for ROMA trainers. And one of them is on helping uh, create a local agency theory of change. Uh, these are designed for your ROMA trainers and implementers to do training at your agency, and it walks you through the process to develop uh, that local agency theory of change. So we would encourage your ROMA trainers uh, to take a look at that, or for folks uh, on, uh, at the program level or at the leadership team level, encourage your uh, ROMA trainers to take a look at these resources and think about incorporating a theory of change into your next strategic planning process. Um, I just want to very quickly run through the organizational standards uh, to make sure that everyone is um, uh, meeting the organizational standards, and then I'll hand it back over to Courtney. Um, so standard 6.1 asks that your uh, uh, agency has a strategic-wide plan in place that has been approved by the governing board within the past five years. Now, as I suggested earlier, um, I would strongly encourage our agencies to be on a three-year planning cycle to make sure you're connecting your strategic plan to your community needs assessment. You want to be building on the results of your needs assessment. Your strategic plan is a reaction to your, your needs assessment. It is the plan you put in place um, to address uh, the needs in your community by achieving outcomes, by implementing strategies uh, that your agency uh, has identified that are going to move the needle uh, in those key performance areas. So again, make sure you're on that three-year planning cycle, if at all possible, so you're tying your needs assessment to your strategic planning process. And of course, make sure that your strategic plan is approved by your board, recorded in your minutes or some other way uh, that you can document the fact that your board has approved the strategic plan. Minutes are probably the best way. Um, but uh, that's a critical component. You're not in compliance with uh, standard 6.1 if you don't have that board approval. So moving on to standard 6.2. Um, it asks that your strategic plan address reduction of poverty, revitalization of low-income communities, and or empowerment of people with low incomes to become more self-sufficient. And one of the things we saw before the standards uh, was agencies that had strategic plans that were primarily internally focused, uh, looking at things like funding, uh, staff training, your IT system, your facilities. And while those are all important things uh, to, to include and think about in your strategic plan, a strategic plan really needs to address both those internal agency outcomes and strategies to achieve them and the outcomes that you want to achieve for uh, the individuals, families, neighborhoods, and communities that you serve. So those are two sides of the same coin. And so this standard is there to make sure that our agencies are including those external uh, outcomes. And we'll talk in a little bit more detail when we uh, discuss writing your strategic plan to make sure uh, you show how you're addressing uh, those three different goals. Um, standard 6.3 asks that the approved strategic plan contain family, agency, and or community goals. As Courtney touched on uh, earlier, um, this is part of the ROMA framework, and what this is really asking you to do is that make sure in both your needs assessment and your strategic planning process, you're looking at the big picture. You're not only looking at individuals and families, you're looking at them in the context of the community, and you're looking at the broader system of services, uh, 
your own agency, other agencies and organizations, uh, and their strengths and challenges uh, in meeting community needs. So this standard really reminds us to take a look at that big picture and make sure that you're looking at those different levels uh, as Courtney suggested. Um, standard 6.4 says that customer satisfaction data and customer input collected as part of the community assessment is included in the strategic planning process. So uh, ideally, uh, our agencies are collecting uh, customer satisfaction data um, more routinely than every three years, um, but certainly uh, it needs to be uh, considered and collected as part of your community needs assessment and then pulled through and used in your strategic planning process. So when we discuss uh, data, data collection, and data analysis for strategic planning the next time around. We'll talk a little bit about that customer satisfaction data, but it's just important to make sure uh, that you haven't left that out because if you get to your strategic planning process and realize you don't have any customer satisfaction data, um, that makes your life that much more difficult. Um, standard 6.5 says that the governing board has received an update on meeting the goals of the strategic plan within the past 12 months. Um, in the last webinar in this series, uh, we'll talk about making sure that you're implementing your strategic plan, you have a structure and a process in place to implement your strategic plan, and part of that is making sure that you are reporting to your board um, so you keep yourself accountable uh, to move forward uh, with the various strategies that you're working on as part of your strategic plan. Now, the standard says uh, this should happen happen every 12 months, uh, but I would strongly encourage uh, at least quarterly uh, or semi-annual reporting to the board about progress towards your strategic plan, any changes that you need to make. Uh, again, that makes sure you're, uh, you're being accountable to implementing your strategic plan, uh, and it helps to have that routine reporting to the board, both to keep them uh, informed and to make sure uh, that you're continually moving forward. And then lastly, there is Organizational Standard 4.3. Um, this asks that the organization or uh, department, if you're a public agency, community action plan and strategic plan document continuous use of the full results-oriented management and accountability, or ROMA cycle, or comparable system. Um, in addition, the organization documents having used the services of a ROMA certified trainer or equivalent to assist in implementation. Now, this uh, webinar series will go through the different phases of the strategic plan. We made sure that the phases of the strategic plan mirror the Roma cycle, so those two are integrated together. And I think it's just a, another opportunity to remind you that strategic planning isn't just one point along that uh, Roma cycle. Uh, remember, we moved from assessment, that's your needs assessment, to planning, your strategic planning process, but that you're always working with your strategic plan. You're always using your strategic plan to guide guide your agency. Um, hopefully you're working on different strategies that you've identified in your strategic plan. Uh, you're implementing them. Uh, you're assessing their results. So strategic planning really embodies that full Roma cycle. It's not just a point on that Roma cycle. It is the Roma cycle. So uh, if you uh, use the process uh, that we're discussing, if you look at our comprehensive guide to community needs assessment, you'll make sure that you are designing a strategic planning process uh, that's aligned with uh, the Roma framework and its principles and practices. Um, this is also a good opportunity to remind you that if you don't have a certified Roma trainer or implementer on staff, uh, we would encourage you uh, to make that opportunity available to them. And the Roma Implementer Program, if you haven't heard about that before, was specifically designed uh, to build the capacity of Roma trainers to work with the community needs assessment and strategic planning process. So if you don't have a Roma Implementer on staff, that's a great internal resource uh, to help you with the needs assessment and strategic planning process. So Courtney, I'm going to pass the uh, presenter uh, mic back over to you. All right. Thank you, Jarl. And uh, we basically have checked off our first agenda item for today. Um, and so we've been able to already go through the overview of the strategic planning process. And um, what we're going to be talking about now is the pre preparing to plan. So this is actually before you even start planning. So really what the guide that we talked about earlier really goes through these um, steps throughout the strategic planning process. Um, so this is that comprehensive guide that Jarl mentioned and um, starts with this preparation. So this is really what we're covering today. Um, and then, of course, we'll get more into the assessment 
um, and further steps as we go through this four-part webinar series. Um, so we're looking at today, we're looking at defining process parameters, we're looking at establishing a planning committee, um, orienting the committee to the process, developing that timeline and work plan. So it's actually before you ever even start to plan. Um, so during this phase, you really choose where, when you're going to begin. Um, and so you kind of map out that whole time frame before you even start. Uh, you also clarify roles, the so roles of the executive director, uh, the board, and as well as the staff. Um, and making sure each are clear on the other's roles is important as well. And then you also create the planning committee. So each of those pieces, Darrell's going to go into further detail on. Um, but as you're assessing whether you're ready, um, which is really looking at that first piece of when do we begin and how long do we need, um, you want to ask some questions. And so you want to ask things like, you know, why are we planning and what do we hope to achieve? Uh, does the agency face any strategic choices? So is there anything kind of just really hovering over the agency at that time that are, you know, is going to be um, a big question or a big choice during the strategic planning process? Um, and this might be something to do with funding. It might be something to do with um, a major event in the community that the agency might need to plan um, upon. Maybe there's been a disaster recently, um, things like that. Um, so, are we achieving our vision, aligned with our mission, and cultivating a healthy organizational culture? Um, so, this is another piece that's very important as you're entering the strategic planning process, um, is because the capacity of the agency and the vision and the mission really have to help guide and be there for um, the plan to be carried out well. Also asking, is the agency financially sound and sustainable? Um, and so, what resources do we already have and what resources do we need? Also, do we have adequate human capital, technology capacity, and the physical infrastructure um, to carry out a plan? And then also, is the board sound, is, are they engaged, and are they effective? Um, so these are all those questions about readiness um, that can help guide the planning process. Then there's also factors that affect timing. Um, so you want to look at when was the last community needs assessment done? A lot of times it's best for the strategic plan to follow very closely from the community needs assessment so that your data is relevant, relevant and up to date. Um, and so that you're planning upon, um, you know, community needs that are real uh, right then. And then you don't have to do a whole lot of extra work to update the community needs assessment as well. Um, and then also the fiscal year and financial schedule. So taking into account um, those items and, you know, knowing when there's um, Lots of great reports due and financial reports. Um, trying to avoid some of those times would be probably good. Um, also, looking at, you know, do we have vacancies filled on our board? Is our board sound? Are they engaged right now? Um, looking at leadership transitions. So, um, you know, if there's a, um, some key leadership positions or the executive director is transitioning in or out, that should be considered in the strategic planning process as well. Um, to ensure that um, the leaders that are going to be there for the long term um, are engaged in that planning process, if possible. And then organizational events, such as conferences, um, so not trying to plan on top of big events. Also, capacity and infrastructure, making sure, sure those pieces are in place um, to be able to plan effectively and implement the plan. And then availability of time and resources, um, you know, making sure that you allot enough time to be able to do the planning process um, and have the resources to do it. And then looking at your monitoring schedule as well, so that during the planning process, um, you're not preparing for a lot of monitoring and funders to be coming in. Um, so obviously, this is a lot um, to consider in the timing. Um, but it's all very important to try to make sure that you really do devote that time uh, to the planning process. Um, and then this is just a piece, um, it kind of goes back to those questions that we covered about readiness, um, but this is included in the Comprehensive Community Action Strategic Planning Guide. And so um, this is something that you can go through before you get started uh, within that guide and kind of give um, a, a checklist. And you can even have the board engage in it, you can have your staff, your leadership, um, so that all of those perspectives about readiness um, are coming into play. With that, I'll go ahead and hand it back over to Jarl um, to talk about roles and responsibilities. 
And thanks so much, Courtney. And this is a really important conversation to make sure you're having at the very beginning of the process. So Courtney talked about making sure uh, that you're ready to begin the planning process. You've thought about timing, um, all those different questions that you should go through. And so uh, in terms of roles and responsibilities, I think the very, very first step in the process is for your leadership team, your executive director and your senior, senior leadership, however you've organized that at your agency, uh, to first of all, have a conversation, uh, review the issues that Courtney has discussed, and make sure that they're on the same page. Um, the next step is for the executive director uh, to then have that conversation with the board. And again, make sure the board is clear about their roles and responsibilities, what strategic planning entails. Um, you may have board members who have never been through a strategic planning process, uh, might be unsure about what their role is, what's expected of them. That's why it's so important to make sure that you get these things hammered out up front so things go smoothly when you're in the planning process itself. Um, so the role of the board is uh, prescribed to some extent for community action agencies in the strategic planning process. And again, the, the key part of the CFDG um, Reauthorization Act of 1998 is in bold, and it asks that your uh, tripartite boards fully participate in the development, planning, implementation, and evaluation of programs to serve low-income communities. So uh, your board really needs to be an active participant in the strategic planning process. Now, I know sometimes that can be uh, a challenge. Uh, your board, uh, your boards are volunteers. Uh, uh, sometimes it can be challenging uh, to get them together for an extended period of time past a regular board meeting. And strategic planning is really uh, one of those processes that, that it's just hard to do in an hour. So I always say, uh, you know, try your best to make sure that your board is engaged. I was just down in uh, West Texas doing a training with some of our Texas agencies on strategic planning. Uh, one of the agencies there uh, has a service area that covers 26 counties. And the executive director was saying, you know, sometimes it's just uh, really difficult to get our full board together, even for regular board meetings, much less uh, to do uh, a full day retreat. So my advice to you is try uh, to do the best you can. Uh, sometimes you can break the process up. If you can't do a full day retreat, um, you can do a more piecemeal process, maybe get feedback from the board uh, about different issues uh, at regularly scheduled board meetings. Uh, but that's why it's so important to make sure the board knows what's expected of them at the beginning of the process. Leave yourself enough time uh, to plan effectively so you can address exactly those kinds of issues and you don't find yourself in the middle of the process uh, struggling to figure out how to make the logistics work. So strategic planning roles, let's just talk uh, big picture for a little bit. Uh, again, the board's primary role in strategic planning is to provide that strategic guidance to the community action agency. Your tripartite board is the voice of the community. Uh, the strategic plan is one of the ways the community uh, expresses um, its, uh, its interest and, uh, and feedback to the agency. And so that's why it's so important to make sure that the board is an active and vital participant in the process. So, the, the number one thing the board should be doing is providing that feedback about the overall uh, direction of the agency, its, its strategies, uh, what community needs it should be addressing. Um, so again, make sure that your board is engaged from the very beginning of the process. Um, many agencies have uh, board committees, uh, uh, for example, a planning committee uh, where the board deals with a variety of planning processes, strategic planning obviously being one of them. Um, but if you don't have a committee uh, that would uh, include strategic planning, I would suggest before you begin your process, to figure out um, how you can organize your board in a way uh, that, especially for those board members that do have more time, talent, and interest in, in working with the strategic planning process, you have a committee structure that can support them uh, in doing that. So, you know, again, many of our agencies have standing committees um, where strategic planning falls under uh, one of their areas of responsibility, but I think having that structure in place to support board engagement uh, is crucially important. You're, you're certainly going to want to engage your full board um, but again, as I said, sometimes that can be difficult, so you want to make sure you've got that smaller group of board members uh, that are more consistently engaged in the process. 
The board can also play an active role in other phases of strategic planning. They can help you connect with other stakeholder groups in the community if you want their feedback. Um, they can help present the strategic plan uh, to other organizations to talk about the overall mission and direction of your agency. Um, and of course, they can provide you with feedback as you're gathering data uh, about, your, uh, about your strategic planning process. And we'll talk about that more next time uh, when we talk about uh, what types of data that you want to gather to make sure your strategic plan is, is built on a solid foundation. Now, your executive director um, is responsible for making sure that the process happens and keeps moving forward. Your executive director uh, is really the leader of the process um, and is responsible for, for making sure um, that it happens smoothly, that it has the resources uh, that it needs, um, and that all those moving parts fit together. And, and your executive director is really the interface between uh, the agency and the board. And so uh, executive directors participate, uh, I think, at different levels in, in sort of the day-to-day -day, um, operational parts of strategic planning, uh, you know, especially at, in smaller agencies. Your ED may be at the table for every single planning meeting uh, because you have a small staff, and so it just sort of happens that way by default. In larger agencies, the ED may play a more hands-off role, um, may delegate uh, sort of the nuts and bolts of the process uh, to other members of the leadership team. Uh, but however you organize that process, uh, the ED is really the leader who initiates things, makes sure that uh, you're keeping your strategic planning process on track, um, works with the board, and keeps that process going. Um, the staff are the ones who do uh, the heavy lifting. Staff uh, typically comprise a committee that we'll talk about in a second uh, that manages the process, uh, that figures out how your process is going to work, uh, that manages uh, the collection of data, um, uh, engages uh, other staff, manages uh, logistics of the process. And so having a good staff committee, uh, I think, is really a critical part towards making sure uh, that your strategic planning process uh, is successful and making sure that everybody knows their roles up front um, is one of the most crucial ways to making sure that your strategic planning process keeps moving along and, and is effective. So speaking of, let's talk in a little bit more detail um, about organizing the planning committee. But before we do, let me see if any uh, questions have come in uh, that we might want to answer. So Liza, anything? Um, just this question that Courtney wanted to address but from Melissa Taylor, um, is this preparing to plan on the national website? Yes, yeah, so the, uh, the answer to that question um, is that preparing the plan is addressed in that comprehensive guide uh, that we showed you. So uh, all of these phases that we'll be going through on this webinar series are discussed in depth in that guide. And of course, this webinar and slides will also uh, be posted in the next couple of days, probably early next week, on the Partnerships website. And of course, if you have any additional questions, just reach out directly uh, to Courtney or myself. All right, so once you've had uh, your, your leadership team has the discussion, make sure they're clear about the roles, uh, about the objectives. Your, uh, your executive director has had that conversation with the board. You put together uh, your planning committee. And so uh, there are no hard and fast rules for who's on that planning committee, uh, probably depending on the size of your agency. This committee will be a uh, different sizes. It could just be a couple of people at a smaller agency. Um, it might be 10 people at a larger agency. So folks that you might consider including uh, on that committee, uh, you may have a board representative. Maybe they're not there for every planning meeting, uh, but perhaps they are the li liaison uh, between the planning committee and the board, so the board remains uh, up to date on the details of the process as it unfolds. Um, as I said, your executive director uh, might be the chair of this committee. They might be uh, rolling their elbows, uh, rolling their sleeves up uh, and, and getting down into the, uh, the details of the process, um, or they just might be uh, coming in uh, every once in a while, again, uh, when there are key decisions to be made, and they might delegate that role uh, to another member of the leadership team. Um, you almost certainly, however, want at least one member of the leadership team on this committee, uh, so there's a direct line of communication uh, to the different parts of the organization, to folks who, who lead your different functional units, your programs and services, finance, uh, HR, and certainly the, uh, the executive director. So you're almost uh, certainly going to want uh, at least one, probably more leadership team uh, representatives on that committee. 
Uh, I'd also suggest you have a ROMA trainer or implementer on that committee. Uh, that's part of making sure uh, that you're meeting standard 4.3, uh, but your ROMA trainer or implementer can also provide you uh, valuable advice uh, about the process itself, how to make sure you're uh, uh, doing an outcomes-based strategic plan, that you're connecting your needs assessment to your strategic plan, and they're just a great resource uh, to have uh, to provide that kind of technical advice. You would probably want at least uh, one or two program managers uh, to uh, provide the perspective from the program level, to provide connection to program staff, other managers, uh, frontline staff, um, and uh, uh, represent uh, the perspective uh, of the programs and services as the planning process gets designed. Um, you're probably going to need administrative support, um, someone uh, to take notes, to manage logistics, so someone with uh, that skill set uh, is especially important. And if you're going to bring in an outside consultant, um, they might participate in committee meetings. Uh, certainly they would provide uh, technical assistance to the committee around things like the, uh, the design of the process. Uh, but if you are going to engage a consultant, I suggest you do that as early in the process as possible, um, both so they can provide you uh, with insights on the process itself. It's always much harder when they come in uh, partway through. Um, and so you can make sure that uh, the consultant uh, knows everything they need to know about uh, strategic planning in the community action process or in the community action context. And you might include other stakeholders. You might have a representative from your, uh, your frontline staff uh, to speak from their perspective, to engage other frontline staff. Um, you might get some customer feedback uh, at certain points, and you might also uh, engage key partners. Uh, again, maybe not uh, present at every single committee meeting, but there might be various points uh, where you would want to uh, engage some of your key partners, uh, perhaps as you're getting ready uh, to get external stakeholder feedback um, or otherwise stay connected uh, uh, with your closer partners uh, that you work with in the community. Um, also make sure that you're utilizing the knowledge of your ROMA implementers and trainers. So I already uh, mentioned that, but just a couple of things uh, to remind you. Uh, they really help you make sure the process uh, is uh, consistent with the ROMA framework and its principles uh, and practices, and make sure that you are uh, really focused on the outcomes that you're trying to achieve, um, that those outcomes address community needs, um, and that you're really looking at strategies uh, that are not just uh, um, addressing the surface uh, conditions of poverty, but really try to dig down into the root causes. So I think your ROMA trainers, ROMA implementers are great resources uh, as part of that planning committee. So make sure you're engaging them uh, as early in the process as possible. So the roles of the planning committee. Um, the planning committee uh, does uh, a significant amount of the work. They design the strategic planning process uh, um, uh, either with the consultant uh, or, or independently. If, you don't, uh, if you're not engaging a consultant, um, they play a significant role in the design and conducting uh, the research process, which we'll talk about uh, next time. So they're doing the heavy lifting there. Um, they provide logistical support, uh, make sure uh, the meeting rooms are set up, that the emails go out to invite people to participate, um, that updates are sent out uh, about where you are in the strategic planning process, um, and they also manage communication with key internal and external stakeholders. Um, so uh, the roles of the planning committee are crucially important. So this slide just gives you uh, an additional suggestion if you are a larger agency, if it looks like your planning committee might become unwieldy, um, you should feel more than free to break up that planning committee uh, into different subcommittees or task groups. So this is just one uh, example. You might have uh, a smaller group who's focused on the research phase, uh, another group that's focused on stakeholder engagement and communication, and then another group uh, that's focused on planning and logistics. So organize your Yourself, uh, as best suits your needs, but don't feel like you have to have you know, 20 or 30 people in the room every time you meet. You can always break up that structure if you're a medium or a larger size organization. So when you pull your planning committee together, um, it's crucially important uh, to have the same conversation that your leadership team uh, and your board did. Uh, so going through that process of making sure everybody knows why you're doing strategic planning, what you hope to get out of it, um, looking at who should participate, um, how that process should be conducted, uh, making sure that there's a uh, clear timeline so you're keeping the process in track, 
and that you have clear deliverables uh, along the way. Strategic planning is a project uh, just like any other, so making sure that you have those key roles and responsibilities uh, assigned, a clear timeline in place, a sense of the resources that you need uh, is crucially important. And so that's the first conversation uh, that your planning committee should have to make sure they are all on the same page. So uh, this slide uh, is just uh, sort of a cheat sheet for thinking about the resources you might need to have an effective strategic planning process. You obviously need uh, staff around the table, uh, but you might be thinking about uh, staff who have facilitation skills. Uh, that's a, a critical part of the strategic planning process is facilitating different components, um, both things like the SWOT analysis, uh, the writing of the strategic plan. Um, so making sure you've got the right staff around the table uh, I think is really important. Um, external expertise is certainly uh, an important resource to consider. So as I said, making sure you've made that decision uh, early about whether to engage uh, an external consultant um, and that you, you do it because you really need one. You've taken stock uh, and you really think that uh, it would be helpful to have that outside facilitator come in and support you. Certainly, time is an important consideration in terms of resources. And I said, uh, you know, a good rule of thumb is that you should start planning to plan you know, six months out if you're a smaller agency, but probably a year out if you're a medium or a larger size agency. And so your planning committee uh, makes sure that you've got a workable timeline in place and that you're sticking to it. Um, facilities is also something people don't always think about, making sure that you've got meeting rooms. Uh, if you're going to do a retreat, that you've got a good place uh, to do that. I'm sure all of you have been to a meeting um, in a bad room that was not conducive to working together. So I know it seems like a minor thing, uh, but facilities uh, are important. You want people to feel comfortable and you want a meeting room that really supports the process. And then lastly, budget. Uh, so if you are bringing in an outside facilitator, making sure that you have the financial resources uh, to, to pay them and any other uh, resource needs uh, that you might have. Um, so if you're doing, uh, for example, surveys that you have, uh, uh, you might need to go out and get some additional support uh, for that. Um, and otherwise, that you've got the money that you need to support the process, uh, that you set aside money uh, to, uh, to rent a, a room at a hotel, for example, if you're doing a retreat, um, and those kinds of nitty-gritty details that can sometimes throw off the process if you haven't thought of them uh, early on. Um, another thing the committee does once it gets those uh, initial conversations completed is thinking about the other stakeholders that you're want, you want to include in the process. So uh, I would suggest that the committee make a list of both internal and external stakeholders and think about how do you want to engage them in the process. Um, different stakeholders are going to participate at different levels of intensity. So not everybody is going to be around the table all the time, um, although I encourage strategic planning uh, to be a participatory, inclusive, and collaborative process. Obviously, different people are going to play different roles, but making sure you've taken that big picture look at your agency, that you're not leaving folks out, um, making different uh, stakeholder groups within or outside your agency feel excluded from the process um, is a great way to throw it off the rails early on. You really want that buy-in at all levels, and you get that by making sure stakeholders are included and feel like their voices are heard. And so, of course, that's true both for your internal and your external stakeholders. So having your planning committee put together that list and be thoughtful about who you're including at what point in the process and what level of intensity is a very important discussion to have. So uh, just to wrap up, now is the time your agency uh, decides um, all those key points in phase one, getting that committee uh, structure established, your planning committee, making sure you've got that timeline in place, making a decision about whether you're going to bring in a, a consultant, um, thinking forward to phase two when you begin the data collection process, uh, making sure that the schedule is very clear, that it's on everybody's uh, calendar, um, and that's why it's so important to plan far in advance. Um, you want some key dates on people's calendars so they're not scheduling over it. Uh, you make sure that that time uh, is free so you're really engaging in strategic planning. You know, if you know that you're going to do a, a retreat 
retreat or you're going to have a two-day meeting, you want to make sure that that time uh, is on everybody's calendar as far in advance as possible. And of course, you want to uh, take a look at your last uh, needs assessment, your last strategic plan, and make sure folks are refreshed uh, on key findings um, and where you are uh, in terms of implementing or otherwise moving forward with the last strategic plan. So just another uh, couple of things that your, uh, your planning committee would make sure happens. So um, we are almost done with perfect timing. I uh, want to make sure you know about uh, the upcoming sessions. Um, next time we're going to talk about phase two, gathering data for the strategic plan. So that is going to happen on Monday the 22nd, right after uh, this weekend. Um, at the same time, uh, 2 Eastern, um, next on January 29th, uh, we'll talk about phase three, developing an outcomes-based strategic plan, making sure your strategic plan has clear outcomes the strategies you're going to use to achieve the outcomes, and the action plans that you're going to use to implement your strategies. And then finally, we'll wrap up with our last webinar in this series on February 1st, making sure you know how to implement your strategic plan, that you have a structure and process in place uh, to make sure you're on track, and how to make sure that you continue to use your strategic plan as a guide to your organ uh, as an overall guide uh, to the direction of your agency. Um, we've included a few uh, additional resources. Of course, we have our comprehensive guide to strategic planning. Uh, there's also a great resource called the Community Toolbox. Um, on your screen, these are hyperlinks that you can click on when you download the slides, uh, but it's communitytoolbox.org. They've got great resources, both for strategic planning and the needs assessment. And of course, those resources I showed you uh, developed in collaboration uh, with the Association for Nationally Certified Roma Trainers on creating a local theory of change. Those are all on the partnerships website. So, uh, in conclusion, you have uh, Courtney and my contact information. Please don't hesitate to reach out uh, to us directly. Again, this webinar recording will be up on our website early next week, along with the slides and the other resources. And again, you can always contact us directly if you have additional questions. So, Courtney, uh, thank you uh, for joining me uh, this afternoon. And also, thanks uh, to all of you for coming out to spend an hour uh, talking about the first stage of strategic planning. and hope to see you on the webinar uh, this coming Monday at the same time to talk about phase two. So have a great weekend, everyone, and hopefully we will see you next week.